Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon. We are here with head coach and general manager of the Washington Mystics, Mike Tebow. If you have a uh, coach, I don't know if you want to give an opening statement before we go to questions or if you want us to go right to questions. Um, well, I know you're sending out a release and, you know, basically, you know, what I said in the release is that, you know, this is a this is a perfect way for us to kick off our 25th season. Um, you know, after the last two years with uh, the bubble and the absences and the injuries and the illnesses and the same thing this past year, what we went through, uh, it felt like, it. you know, we needed a, a break to kind of jumpstart us. And, uh, you know, you're always hopeful going into these things, but, you know, I, uh, I, I witnessed it from afar when the three to C draft lottery took place and we were fourth and I wasn't even here yet. And I kept thinking those poor people in DC, you know, look what they just went through. And a month later I was the coach. So um, this, uh, this kind of has a little bit of karma feeling to it. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's a great opportunity because it gives us so many options uh, going through, you know, the next four months. Uh, there's a variety of players to look at. Uh, it can help us maybe in free agency decide a few things if we have to. I don't know that it will necessarily. Um, you know, you always have the option to trade the pick if there's the right offer. Um, but, you know, it just it puts so many things on the table for us uh, that you don't have otherwise. And so, um, you know, it's exciting to, you know, spend the next three or four months uh, preparing for this and doing the homework that we need to do. Uh, for it. So we will now open up to questions. We will start with Kareem Copeland. Hey, Mike, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. You just touched on what I was going to ask about. I was going to say, man, a lot of bad luck these last couple of years. It kind of feels like it came back around. Um, but since you touched on that, um, I want to ask, you know, we know you're not afraid to trade a pick. Um, no, I'm not. <laughs> what what goes into um, your thought process? You know, obviously you're not going to have, you know, just what goes into the thought process as you're kind of weighing your options in, in that way? Well, I think number one, as we've talked about, you know, in the off season already, you know, where we are salary cap wise, what this does for us, you know, balancing out, uh, you know, top end contracts with, uh, you know, young talent that, you know, that's on a rookie contract. That's certainly, uh, a, you know, a huge consideration when you have the first or second pick in the draft. Um, I think that, um, you know, I think I'm trying to, you know, say this the right way. We have a window right now that's been opened up again uh, a little bit. I mean, we know we're getting healthier. Uh, and so, you know, you try to decide, okay, do we trade this for a veteran player that extends our window for the next couple of years? You know, we, I mean, I want to win now, you know, I'm not going to be coaching for the next 10 years. Uh, I want to win a championship. Every team, if they have an opportunity to win a championship wants to make the most of it. Um, and so does the draft pick plus whatever we do in free agent, does that solve it? Um, you know, does it, mean that you go get a veteran player to go with this group? I don't know that, um, but it's exciting as a staff to be able to kind of figure that out um, and, and see, you know, you, you, you aren't pigeonholed by, by what we have to do now. Um, we have a window right now that, you know, if everybody, you know, keeps progressing with their injuries, uh, the window is wide open for us to win a championship again. And just one more, just kind of overall, what do you feel, you know, your, your initial feelings about this draft class as a whole? Well, you know, I wasn't a big fan of the last two draft classes, uh, particularly down where we were going to be picking the last, you know, few years. You know, two years ago when we traded for Tina, uh, we would have had the 12th pick in the draft. And I don't think it was particularly, you know, high end draft. There were good players, but they're not ones that change your franchise. They're people that fill out your bench a little bit down in that area. Um, you know, I think this is a better draft than, than the last two. I think there are good drafts ahead for the next few years. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't believe that you necessarily, when you have the first pick, pick for a specific spot. I think that, you know, I said this on the broadcast that I think it gives you an opportunity to draft who you think is the best talent for the long term. Um, who can maybe be a star who somebody, you know, can they be, you know, an all league performer? And so maybe at that point, position isn't that important. I think you try to get the, 
the best player available, um, you know, for the long haul, you know, as a short term situation, maybe that changes, but I doubt it because for our team, I don't know that the rookie player is going to come in and impact us uh, necessarily for our championship. You know, I think that may be solved more in free agency uh, than it does in the draft. That's perfect. I appreciate you. I'll let other people talk now. Yep. Doug? Hey, Mike, you uh, you mentioned it a bit. I mean, just the, the way the ball bounces sometimes and the luck you guys had or the bad luck. Does this sort of make it sound, feel a little better, all the crap you had to go through, all the injuries, <laughs> the worst season of your life with injuries that now there's a reward of you have a number one pick? Yeah. I mean, the last time we were in this situation uh, back in 2016, uh, we, we had had a bunch of injuries, uh, at the end of the season and we ended up missing the playoffs and so we shut down some people. Um, it, it gave us the pick to, to make the trade to get Elena Deladon. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a you know, you don't like to be rewarded this way. You'd like to be playing uh, for something important, but if you're going to have a year where you go through this, um, this makes some of the suffering a little bit more tolerable knowing that we have. Uh, a piece for our future that's significant. And, and along those lines, I mean, you guys were one win or a loss away from making the postseason. Does that make that a little better to swallow that, hey, we missed it, but here's a nice reward for missing the playoffs? Yeah, it, it does. And, you know, it's got kind of funny because I was sitting there with COVID the last week and watching from a distance, and we were struggling in every way possible, as everybody knows. I mean, we, uh, uh, we weren't playing well. Um, and sometimes, you know, the general manager part of me, the coaching part of me wants to win every single day. The general manager part of me that last week was going, you know, maybe being in the lottery isn't the worst thing that could happen to us. And here we are. So, um, you know, I, I'm not a big believer in tanking. I don't believe that's the way you should go. But, you know, I think sometimes the way things happen and how things happen to your team, um, they happen for a reason. You know, you're not good enough. And, you know, we even if we had made the playoffs, we were not going to be competing for a championship. We didn't have that caliber of team at the end of the year. So, um, you know, this this is a huge uh, step for us to, to reverse that. Tyler. Hey, coach. Good to see you again. Um, this go at the end of the season, you told us that this pick was going to be a huge piece for the organization. Now it's an even bigger asset for you guys. Does this provide some clarity on what you want to use this pick for this offseason, or does it make it more complicated? I don't think it makes it more complicated. I think it can, it just helps you narrow your focus a little bit more. Um, you know, we've had, as I said, probably seven, eight players that we've been kind of following carefully for, you know, whether we were the fourth pick or third pick or whatever. Now it can narrow it down a little bit more. Uh, my process will be probably to go uh, out to see, you know, four or five players on an extended basis, get to, you know, be around them uh, several days in a row, watch practices, uh, try to get a feel for their day-to-day -day thing. And so it allows you uh, not, I hate to use the term waste time, but now we can make better use of our time in, in who we see and how we go about it. Then a quick follow-up, you kind of touched on it with, uh, I think it was Kareem's question, but how can a rookie player with the current prospects that are out there right now fit into the championship team that you hope to be building? I mean, I would assume, you know, based on our roster, nobody's going to come in necessarily and start for us, but I think they can be a big piece of what we do. You know, we said we needed to improve our bench. We needed to get younger in that regard. Uh, we needed some energy. Um, I think a player like that can can bolster a team, uh, give you depth, uh, help you survive uh, some injuries during the year and grow into the role. And yet when you come to a team like ours, they aren't expected to be saviors. A lot of times when you're in the lottery uh, in any sport, you know, that pick is exposed, you know, supposed to be that that person that turns it around. We don't need this draft pick to be somebody that turns us around. We need somebody to fit in and, and make us better, but they aren't going to carry the same weight maybe that somebody would, you know, go into another uh, organization uh, that hasn't been winning. You know, we feel like we have a winning culture and a winning group of players that are already signed. This just enhances that more than anything. Thank you, Mike.
Jen. Hey coach, congrats on the pick. Thank um, you. How big a deal do you feel like it is specifically in this draft to be picking number one instead of elsewhere in the lottery? Um, uh, good question. I, I, I felt like we were going to be comfortable. You know, we, our odds said that we were going to get the third pick. So uh, I think we would have been comfortable finding a player at the third pick that fit our team that we would have liked. Um, but I think that each spot you move up uh, gives you a little bit more edge. I mean, uh, I, I think that, you know, you don't have to sit there and guess what somebody else might, you know, do if you have the second or third pick. You're sitting there on draft day holding your breath uh, like, oh, man, I hope they don't take this player in front of us. You know, we get what we want. Now we hold the cards. Uh, we hold the cards if we want to, you know, make a trade. Uh, we it, it allows us to, um, you know, be really clear with ourselves about what's important to us with this pick. And so you're not playing a guessing game. You, you, you hold the cards. And then uh, I know, I know Tosh said she was bringing the luck as your representative, but um, you know, any, any superstitions this morning in the TiVo household and, and how did you decide to send Tosh? Well, it was interesting. Originally we were going to send Shamika Holsquaw having, you know, been, uh, a number one pick for this franchise before. And, you know, starting our 25th anniversary, uh, Shamika was an early player in this. And, you know, she's uh, she's had something this weekend uh, that we alluded to about, you know, her wife and, and they, they are expecting a child and there's some things going on. Um, but I felt Tosh uh, would represent us well. Uh, she was up, she said she was really nervous uh, I, I, I don't have a lot of superstitions when it comes to stuff like this. I have a lot of routines when it comes to coaching my team, maybe during the se season, but, uh, I sent her an emoji of a four leaf clover this morning and that was it. Uh, wished her luck. And, um, you know, she was excited to do this. You know, she feels like she's a big part of what we've had going since she's been here the last eight years. And so, um, I was excited for her that she could, you know, she could be successful uh, on that stage. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Shy. Uh, hello, hello, Mike. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I, I can't help but thinking um, how your decision with this pick um, will depend also on uh, what Emma Messman will be doing next year. Um, do you have uh, any idea what will be her, her intentions or in, and if we'll see her with the Mystics next year? I really don't know at this point. Uh, Emma is, uh, if everybody remembers back to 2018 um, with the World Cup, um, her team, her national team put her in the position of saying, hey, you can go play in the regular season, but you got to leave before the playoffs because we want to do all of our tour. If we're in that same boat again, I don't know that she will play. If uh, she feels differently and she can say to her national team, hey, you know, I'll, I'll show up like the other WNBA American players do. And, you know, when we're done playing, I'll show up. But it doesn't work for somebody to play in the regular season and not in the playoffs. So I don't know what her mindset is. Um, we've we've texted a little bit, but uh, I'm going to have a heart to heart conversation with her, you know, as we get into the free agency period when we can talk to her. Um, I. I I'm not, you know, probably particularly optimistic about that. I don't know, but I know her allegiances in, in the years like this has always been to her national team as they've gotten better. When she was first with us for several years, uh, their national team wasn't uh, a factor on the international stage, but now they are. They're one of the better teams in the world. And so uh, she has to make a decision of whether, you know, what her priority is and if she can balance both. Thank you. Pepper. Hi, Pepper. Hi. Um, hi, Coach. Congratulations on the pick. How much would you say your draft will be influenced by free agency? I don't know that it will be yet. Um, you know, obviously, it's, it's nice that we have our free agency and we can, you know, have that decision made before we ever draft. Um, but I don't know that it necessarily will. I think we have a clear... Uh, position our team that needs to be filled in free agency in the post um, you know and so I think after that then we can go ahead and, and draft um, you know as we want 
um, that may give us some clarity. But at the same time, like I said, I think my, my, my mindset right now today is that the draft will be whoever we think is the best player for the long term, whether it's a guard or a post or whatever. Um, you know, each of the players at the top of the draft bring different kind of strengths. And we're going to try to weigh that out, uh, you know, learn more about them as individuals and, you know, what kind of teammates they are and what their, you know, drive is and what their motor is. And, you know, I think those are all going to be traits that are important to us uh, in, in how we play and what kind of player we want uh, in our Mystics organization. All right. Thank you. Congrats again. You bet. Thank you. Miles. Hi, Coach. Congratulations on the pick. Miles Ehrlich from Windsider. Uh, yep. My question was regarding Alicia Clark, because before her foot injury last year, her signing last offseason was one of the largest free agency moves. How has she progressed in her recovery, and is she anticipated back on the court by training camp? Yes. In fact, uh, she's been on the court several days a week doing individual workouts with our coaching staff, uh, probably four days a week, uh, making progress, hopefully by, you know, January, February, she can be playing full court some. Uh, and so uh, the feeling is uh, if everything goes according to form, she'll be in good shape, you know, with, with you know, plenty of room to spare before training camp. Uh, she's optimistic. She feels pretty good. Um, but, but we've limited her workouts to one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one type things uh, with coaches right now. Thanks so much and congratulations again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Rafiq? This is Rafi Kudat to put that sports talk. Congratulations on getting number one pick in the draft. Thank you. I just want to ask you, since you already got so many talented players with Tina Charles and Aaliyah Deladon, Alasia Clark, when she comes back from injury, how do you plan to fit in the number one pick in this year's draft, whether you're drafting Ryan Howard or Avino Westbrook and whoever it is you draft? Well, I think, as I said before, that, you know, this player has to fit into the group we have. Uh, you know, we don't have the, the post position filled yet. Tina's a free agent. Emma's a free agent. Um, but I think that, um, you know, this player just needs to play what we call Mystics basketball. They have to be unselfish. They have to be willing to pass the ball. Uh, they have to have uh, an energy level that matches the rest of our group. Um, they don't need to be a savior for us. They need to come in and fit in, uh, learn from our veterans. Uh, we have great veterans to teach them. I mean, you know, when you can bring somebody in and have them being around Elena Deladon, Alicia Clark, and Natasha uh, Cloud and Ariel Atkins, that's a pretty good group to learn from and be around. You have Olympians on that team. You have people who have been all defense. You have people who have been MVPs. Uh, that's, a, that's a great group for, for a new player to come in and learn from. And I want to get your thoughts on the new playoff format for the WNBA playoffs next year. Um, uh, that's a mixed bag for me. I, uh, I've already said, I think publicly I'm in favor of playing a series. I just don't like the two, one format. I think we could end up with a high seed having to play the deciding game uh, on the road. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, I understand why uh, the league uh, wants to do that from a travel and financial consideration, but, um, you know, the one, one, one would have been the most fair way to do it. If we can do three, I'm a big favor in the future. If we figure, figure out a way to make all series, five game series. Uh, and so I'm going to continue to push for that at some point. Get your insight and I can't wait to see how you handle your roster in the off season. It's uh, it's going to be fun to have the, the, the task to do it. It's going to be great. Good luck. Thank you. Last question to Jen. Just a quick one. Uh, how do you plan to celebrate tonight or in the next few days getting that top pick? I haven't really thought about it much, but I am definitely going to have a glass of wine or beer or champagne or something here in a little bit with dinner. Uh, and uh, my wife and I are going to try to have a, a nice calm night and, and get back to work on it tomorrow. But there, there, there'll be, there'll be a, a drink involved here soon. I think that's it, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. We hope everyone See stays safe and has a nice, ho nice holiday Have season. Thank Have you. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays, y'all.